Hi everyone, Michelle Ford here, Senior Editor for SLR Lounge. In this episode, we'll be talking about flash sync speed. What does that mean and what the limitations are? Let me explain what goes on with your camera when you press the shutter button. Most DSLRs have two curtain mechanisms in front of the sensor. So let's pretend this is a sensor. When you press the button, the sensor is exposed. First, one curtain goes up and then the second one follows to close the window. So your shutter speed setting determines the amount of time between the first curtain opening and that second curtain closing. So if you slow it down, then the sensor is exposed much longer. And if you speed it up, the second curtain starts closing before that first curtain is fully open. So it kind of looks like this. For the faster shutter speed, your first curtain opens and before it's all the way up, that second one's already coming to close. So it's really just a slit of a window passing over the sensor. So what happens when your flash fires? So again, if this is my sensor, the first curtain goes up, the flash fires, exposes the sensor, and then the second curtain comes in to close. Now remember, if your shutter speed is fast, you only get a sliver of a window. So here's the problem. If you have your shutter speed set pretty high, you don't have a fully open window. So when your flash fires that single burst of light, it might only expose a small section. So kind of like this. First curtain goes up, flash fires, but the second one's already right here. So what that means is that single burst of light would only touch that small section and the rest of the sensor might be obstructed by one or both of the curtains, leaving the rest of the sensor underexposed. Which is why, by the way, when you look at your images, you might see them as black bands across the image. Cameras have what is called a maximum shutter speed sync. That's the fastest shutter speed you can set to avoid these black bands. So check your manuals to confirm your camera's limits, although most cameras have it at around 180th or 200th of a second. So as long as you set your shutter speed to 200 or less, you should be free of that black band. Now some higher end cameras and flashes have what is called a high sync speed setting. On Canon, it's the HSS setting, and on Nikon, it's called Auto FP. This feature lets you use your flash at shutter speeds higher than your maximum sync speed without the banding. Again, with a fast shutter speed, you only get a sliver and the flash burst would only expose that little piece of the window. So if you have the HSS for Canon or the Auto FP feature turned for Nikon on, the flash would produce not one burst, but many bursts of light, kind of like a strobe effect. So it starts before that first one even goes up and starts flashing, and then it keeps going until the second one is completely closed. And what that does is it's exposing all the tiny little windows. So your resulting image has no bands. So a typical use for high sync speed would probably be where you're shooting a subject in a brightly lit scene outdoors. And let's say you want your f-stop at about 2.8 because you want the background blurred. But then again, you don't want to blow it out, so you compensate with a fast shutter speed. Maybe use fill flash for your subject. So here's my example. Let me show you guys an image. I put this little guy um, with a window behind him, and at f2.8 to get him properly exposed, I would either have to raise the ISO or lower the shutter. And either way, I was blowing out the background. But if I exposed for the background, I was at about a thousandth of a second, and he was in the dark. So I liked the way the background looked and I just needed to do a fill flash on him. So I had to set up my HSS and this is what I got. So high sync speed is awesome and it definitely has its uses, but it's also got some major drawbacks. The first issue is it's very heavy on battery use. Consider that with each click of the shutter, you're firing your flash more than once and usually that's at a higher power. The second issue is for off camera lighting. When my Canon flash is connected to my Canon body like this, the sync speed limitation is automatically implemented. And by that I mean I can't accidentally set a faster shutter speed and cause banding because the camera simply won't let me unless I turn the high sync speed function. But if I want to use off camera flash with high sync speed function, I have to invest in flashes and triggers that have that capability. That usually means more money. So there you go. I hope that helps you guys in understanding flash photography just a little bit more. Till next time, Michelle Ford signing out.